Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into Elmer's squishy making kit. More specifically, I want to find out what is in their packets of secret solution, and I'll do that by replicating the same process using existing products. These kits came out recently and were pretty hyped all across social media. The most interesting detail is that the final step involves using an entire tube of Elmer's glue to add color and glitter. Squishy resin can be notoriously sensitive to moisture, and you might remember my very first attempt at making squishies, which failed because of a few tiny droplets of water inside the mold. Elmer's glue, of course, contains a lot of moisture as well as PVA, so I'm really curious to see how all of that will affect the curing process. So here's the Elmer's squishy making kit, and the packaging is very nice. There's a lot of attention to detail, and even their cups and stirring sticks are branded. You get some tubes of glitter glue, crafting utensils, and eight packets of this secret solution. You also get four high-quality molds that let you create some mystery characters. This type of snap-apart three-dimensional mold is very rare to find in craft kits, so hats off to Elmer's for including them. Now comes the part that I find most disappointing about the product, which is that none of these characters feel very fun or exciting. This is just a random mishmash of monsters and animals without any discernible facial expressions. I'm pretty sure that they were trying to make this product as gender neutral as possible, which is a positive selling point of Elmer slime kits. But the result here is a bunch of characters that really aren't appealing to girls, who are definitely still their main target market, and probably only marginally interesting for boys. I think there are much better examples of gender-neutral character design, such as all of the original mochi squishies. The mixing process is pretty foolproof, because you just add one packet of each solution. The cups also have lines, so you can check that there's an equal amount of both. Then you add one small tube of Elmer's glitter glue for decoration. I really like this detail because it bulks out your solution so you can create bigger squishies or more of them. I actually had enough leftover to fill up one of my own molds as well. This is supposed to cure in one hour, so we're going to set it aside. Now comes the interesting part, which is trying to figure out what is inside these packets. The fact that they're labeled A and B strongly implies that this is a two-part resin. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to test that out by mixing Elmer's glue into other types of squishy resin and seeing which one behaves most closely to this. The products we'll be testing out are Sophie and Toffee Squishy Gel, which you've probably seen really often on my channel. This is a two-part silicone-based resin that also has a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. Then we have Puni Gel, which is a Japanese product that you mix inside these packets. Puni means squishy in Japanese, and this one is primarily sold for making jewelry and charms. And thirdly, we have Rainbow Jellies, which come as part of these craft kits. I've reviewed all of these in detail before, so feel free to check out those videos if you want to know more. The reason why I have high hopes for Squishy Gel is that many years ago, I had the chance to test out one of the earliest prototypes of this material. I still have those bottles, and as you can see, the liquid inside looks milky, almost exactly like Elmer's secret solution. Sophie and Toffee then refined the final product, so it's crystal clear. I'm not going to use these bottles for this video because they're so old and may not work anymore, but I'm definitely curious about whether these are similar. This cup makes it very easy to measure because I don't have to weigh it like I normally do. Then I'm adding a full tube of white glitter glue and mixing it together. One thing I'm noticing is that the mixture looks very thin, almost watery. This doesn't usually happen, so I'm not sure if that's a good or bad sign. I'm going to pour this into one of the Elmer's molds and also one of my own. Squishy gel takes 24 hours to cure, so I'm going to check back tomorrow. Next comes Puni Gel, and these are leftover packs with a bit of glitter inside. You're supposed to push the gel from one side to the other and mix back and forth about 50 times. This is very painful in your fingers, but fortunately I can skip most of that this time. I'm simply going to dump three packets into the cup and then mix them together with the glitter glue. 
Puni gel normally takes 24 hours to cure, but a strange thing started happening here and the mixture was curing almost instantly. I had trouble getting it into the mold and I was basically scooping the thickened resin inside. Puni gel should also be transparent, but this one acquired a milky look during mixing. I'm pretty sure it's due to the air bubbles, but the resin is too thick now for the bubbles to disappear on their own. And finally, we have rainbow jellies, which is probably the most viral one out of all squishy making kits. Instead of mixing the resin inside the pot, I'm going to cut it open and get as much out of it as possible. You don't get a lot of material here, so I don't think I can use the Elmer's mold. I'm also not using the full tube of glitter glue just to keep the ratios balanced. The liquid is very thin, but this is normal. In a previous video, mixing glitter into rainbow jellies didn't work very well, but this one looks okay so far. I have a tiny bit of the resin left, so I'm going to try using it with the Sumiko Garashi molds from this video. These are cheap disposable molds from a DIY candy kit, but I kept them because they were so cute. If these work for squishies, then that would be amazing. This is the next day and I was pleasantly surprised to see that every one of these has set. First up is the original Elmer's resin and obviously I'm not expecting a lot of surprises here. The chemistry of this kit works very well, so you'll definitely end up with a fun little squishy. I got this unicorn mold in my box, which is probably the girliest design they have, but it still looks a bit generic. I think rainbow jellies do a much better job with their character designs, even if you ignore the extra things like adding the hair and face. I also noticed that the plastic mold produces a much shinier surface compared to the homemade silicone mold for the octopus. Now I'm adding some facial features using black paint, and of course this is a step you can also do with Elmer squishies just to elevate them a bit. This feels quite nice to squeeze, but it's definitely firmer than a mochi squishy. Now we have Squishy Gel, and this is the one that I felt could be closest to Elmer's secret solution. However, I was proven wrong because it seems like adding glitter glue really messed with the resin. All the glue has sunk to the bottom, and this part is basically just sticky glitter. The top part is cured, but just barely, and it feels extremely fragile. This is unexpected because Squishy Gel is usually pretty good at holding glitter or pigments in place. I can only assume that it's the water content of the glue that disrupted the curing process. So the secret solution is definitely not the same thing as this type of squishy gel. Moving on to Puni gel, this one had no problems with the glitter separating, but it feels really hard and doesn't look very transparent. When done correctly, Puni gel is supposed to be crystal clear, but I think all that mixing added too many air bubbles. I also realized that this is the reason behind the packet squishing method. When you're mixing the gel inside the packet, there are no air bubbles, so the finished resin is perfectly transparent. In any case, this one turned out fine, but it feels like solid rubber and doesn't look very aesthetic. This is definitely not the same thing as Elmer's squishy solution. The rainbow jelly surprised me quite a bit, because the glitter is still in exactly the same position. Considering how thin the liquid was, I was fully expecting it to sink to the bottom. The one in the Sumiko Garashi mold also cured perfectly, and it's a shame I didn't have enough to fill it to the top. This one looks super shiny, so I'm making a mental note to do a whole DIY using these molds someday. Adding glitter glue hasn't affected the curing process at all, and this one feels pretty similar to Elmer's secret solution. Both of these all secure within 60 minutes, compared to the 24 hours needed for Squishy or Puni Gel. Here you can see all four in comparison. Whatever chemistry they use for rainbow jellies is closely related to Elmer Squishies as well. Both are not affected by the addition of glue or water and they still have a pretty nice squish. I prefer the slightly softer texture of rainbow jellies, but I think it sucks that they only give you such a tiny amount and you're limited to the colors inside the pack. Rainbow jellies is also pretty expensive, so they're not practical for making your own DIYs. I love the fact that you get a lot more material from the Elmer's kit. Since we know that the liquid can be bulked out with glue, you can also add the same amount of clear glue and glitter to increase the final volume. 
So if you ever wanted to try making squishies from scratch, then this Elmer's kit is a great place to start. I'd recommend buying just the refill packs of Secret Solution and then using those on any molds of your choice. If you need more inspiration on how to create your own squishies, then check out all of the videos I've linked below. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!